aerodynamic drag consumes power at the rate velocity cubed, which largely defines the economics of speed. Reducing aerodynamic lift, on the other hand, is only a small factor influencing safety. Then safety isn't really considered as a direct economic factor, but rather feeds into complex sociological impacts. The speed regime glossing over such sociological impacts is established through the mix of rather unspecific factors tied to the vehicle's context as much as the vehicle itself. This highly simplified problem space of speed therefore provides a significant amount of room for aesthetics to influence the appearance of vehicles. This video I'll be showing a number of model variants that will be analysed for their drag. On their own, each model isn't really interesting, but using the same base model and modifying it to appear like vehicle types, we gain an insight the aesthetic influence for the economics of speed. You could do this with a regression analysis of real world cars and vehicles, but I'm going to do it with a bunch of vehicle types for which I wouldn't otherwise do a CFD analysis. I'm going to fill out this plot with the x-axis is the drag coefficient and the y as categorically defined. The problem space exists because the same model base is used for these categories to relate. Meaning is derived through the sequence of CFD cases. Cars and vehicles that look like cars and vehicles. The first category is the big autos bread and butter, establishing shapes as generic. Their aerodynamics are mostly to satisfy government-enforced efficiency standards built into these shapes to reduce drag. This could be described as the necessary aesthetic of the car to look and function like a car. It's probably the affordable category of aerodynamic drag before performance starts to drive the vehicle shape, affordable in the aesthetic sense rather than the monetary cars or vehicles that look like they have performance. This could be both positive or negative beyond the first category. This category is divided into things that have explicit aerodynamic purpose or they are factoring the economics of speed. That is, utility is subtracted from the factors used to influence the power required for movement. Then lastly, the vehicle that appears to look like something with reference to some other cultural artifact. It is the things that look like other things, an eclectic mix of cultural references, usually time dependent. Each category has some element of this period dependent styling, but here it is just more pronounced. This would more often than not have a negative impact on the economics of speed. I would classify non-functioning performative wings or vents as they are referencing race cars. Anyway, this is a plot to make an eclectic mix of models I want to test tied into one video. Bringing back the Suzuki model for this as it has far better front aero than the Golf model. The front lift is mostly neutral rather than substantial. Drag is better, it's just a better model. The six models simulated are a response to the three aesthetic categories. They are all modified in the same volume so we can glean a characteristic of the relative shapes. The baseline for this model is that which includes a spoiler on the hatch which improves drag performance by 10%. For the mid 80s, this car was ahead of its time as this flap becomes industry standard. We are going to judge all other models from here. Firstly is the ute if you're an Australian. Ute is just short for utility which makes sense because it's shorter. This is a fun sized vehicle that exists and it exists outside Japan as the Mighty Boy. From the same period as the Suzuki Swift model here and it is about the same size even just a little smaller. It is also the closest thing I'm going to get to simulating this type of vehicle. Lopping off the rear hatch and windows, I shelled out the tray. This open tray is slightly less draggy than the standard hatch without the rear spoiler by just 2%. Lift was worse by 5%. 
there seems to be a bit more lift over the cabin. All the drag around the rear makes it possible to perform magic tricks for the nice locals. Bro, what the fuck is even happening? To answer this nice gentleman's question, there is a strong downwashing component in the wake impacting the ground, pushing the air that would normally exit, exit the center, now blown out to the sides. It is likely that the bottle is sitting in this region. A vehicle with a higher ride and longer tray would make this interaction stronger. The upwash from the sides, forward wash from the tray, and downwash from the wake. Adding the bed over the tray reduces the size of the main wake structure. With inwash along the sides, the intensity of the downwash isn't impacting the ground with as much momentum. Reducing the size of the wake usually means reducing the drag, which is happening here as well. Almost 6% less drag than the open tray. We are still 7% off where we would be if the cabin was still there. Aesthetics isn't a choice, rather it is a result of providing an open volume at the rear. Not only does this affect the aesthetics, it also has a negative effect on the economics of speed. In this case, speed costs more. Adding the bed over the tray reduces access to this volume, at the same time as reducing the cost of speed. The next two models fall into the vehicles that look like vehicles category. A car that has high cariness. A recent trend from the last 5 to 10 years is to taper the cabin in above the rear wheels. The rear cross section is much smaller, reducing the size of the wake. It looks kind of odd here, as the line is created by the tapering in two dimensions on a 3D car. It's much more aesthetically pleasing on cabins designed with this in mind maybe increasing the size of the weight just slightly. A direct comparison to the baseline is a 10% reduction in drag. The baseline with this SEX of 0.48 is now 0.43. The cut line is the same as the previous model of the ute, but the body controls how the air enters the wake. The tray with the bed is more draggy than the baseline Therefore, controlling the wake saves 16% in drag. The next model has been requested a number of times. It is replicating the Alto Works RS, with the spoiler wrapped all the way around the hatch's rear window. Slotted spoilers haven't returned positive results previously when I have tested them. Drag then was increased by 5%. In this case, drag has increased just slightly by 2%. Here is me trying to follow what is going on here. The slots in the spoiler suggest performance as they mostly appear on performance vehicles. But the only application I could find was that it was to help clean the rear window. As they tend to be only associated with performance models, it is likely an aesthetic association of speed rather than a functional solution. It does not perform better, but it is only associative to performance. The only caveat is, car that it is mounted on has a steeper rear window. But then again, similar models have this mounted on performance models. So it's likely that it's a low cost aesthetic. Lastly, we're going hypermiling. Radical drag reducing shapes aren't aesthetically acceptable by the current populace. Complaining about the cost of petrol and driving very inefficient vehicles is apparently far more popular and socially acceptable. Why be efficient when you can be complaining? The large extension in the theme of controlling the wake reduces the drag by 28% on this model from the baseline. The difference is that it massively shrinks the size of the wake. It's important or fundamental because the wake is made up of air that is continuously replenished by more energized air. Reducing its size means that there's less energized air entering into or produced by the wake. But say you want to avoid social stigma of not complaining. That is so you can meet your biological needs of social interaction. Toning down the aesthetics may be met by reducing the length of the tail. This configuration reduces drag by 24%, almost as good as the very long tail. 
as having seen the cases, filling in this plot tells a few stories. From a historical perspective, more modern vehicles are increasingly moving further to the low drag end of the scale. Even the emotional support vehicles are moving in this way, even when they are growing in size. More big equals more emotional support. The tendency for the large vehicles is to be further away from an economics of speed aesthetic, which is correlated to the ownership motivations. Increased knowledge of aerodynamics, coupled with manufacturing advances, allows vehicles to carry an alternative aesthetic while still being less draggy. That is, even without the ridiculous aesthetic of big, there is a tendency to stretch the plot vertically. Aesthetics aligned more with the economics of speed become more embedded, which shifts socially acceptable limits. But saying all this, cars aren't a long-term solution to anything social. Acceptance will come to an end, and another aesthetic will take over.